Hey, parents and guardians, you may have started to notice that the way that your child's mathematics teacher is grading is very, very different from the way that you and I are in grades when we were in school back in the day. That's for sure. So what is this PDF that my child's teacher is sending me and how do I interpret that? So what your teacher is now doing is actually grading uh, a student's outcomes. And I'm going to try to explain this in non-education East terms as best as I can. But you see, instead of grading events like quiz, test, project, homework, your child's teacher is now starting to grade outcomes on objectives. This is a form of what we call mastery-based grading. How well can the students show that they know how to do, say, these topics in mathematics? All right. And for any given, for any given uh, objective here for a course, teachers can ask questions at a basic level, at an intermediate level, and at an advanced level, as you can see right here. So the PDF that you received has the categories of basic, intermediate, and advanced on it, right? So I'm going to show you how this works, okay? So now let's suppose here that we have a student, and that student is, ab is able to show that they've mastered the objective by answering a question correctly. In that case, that student earns a check, all right? And two consecutive checks in a row, again, two in a row, that indicates mastery of the objective at that level. Okay, so notice here, the grade here is now a two out of two for this objective. But if the student makes a mistake, see it's still a one out of two and one out of two, but we need two consecutive checks in a row for a student, watch this, the one will change now to a two, if that makes sense. Okay, but now let me show you something else here. I'm gonna zoom in. All right, now there's a lot of symbols on, on this uh, rubric here. And what all these symbols mean is right here. You can read the notes for yourself, okay? But check this out here. Let's suppose that a student here struggles with basic level questions for a certain category. They're just getting them wrong after getting them wrong after getting them wrong. That's what the X's mean, okay? And they may get one right, but they may get one right, but then they're still getting, they're still not able to demonstrate master the objective without say getting help. That's what H stands for, right? The next day they do a little better in the intermediate category. Notice the score is one out of four here, right? Why? Because, well, we didn't get two consecutive checks in a row here. A basic would earn us at least a two, right? So right here in the intermediate category, let's suppose that a student is still struggling, still struggling, still struggling, had to ask for help quite a bit. Your teacher is documenting data here, all right? But now, on now two or three days later, something just clicks. Light bulb goes off over the head and the student is flying and they're able to answer advanced questions pretty darn correctly. Watch this. You see how we have a one here, right? So look at this right here. Let's suppose students able to demonstrate knowledge of that objective, right? And right here, they do it two consecutive times in a row. Watch that one. That automatically now changes to a four, a four out of four here. So students are not punished for not being able to uh, do it in the very beginning. If they're able to, over time, achieve it at a higher level, then they're gonna get, they're gonna earn the full credit for that objective here. I want you to look at this situation right here. You're gonna go skydiving three weeks, let's say, and you get to choose who packs your parachute. So right here, we have three people, Abigail, Ben, and Charlie. And each of them has earned a parachute packing score, as you could see right here, right? Time goes on for each of these people. But yet, if you get to choose in three weeks who packs your parachute, who would you pick? I believe most of you said Abigail. And the reason why is because it shows that, well, she's improved over time. And now, man, she is rocking it right here. Ben here is like, oh, you know, he's, he started off great, but something happened. Maybe something's going on in his personal life. I don't know. But now he's not doing so well. And Charlie's like a hit or miss, right? Have, did you were, were you like one of those kids in school? So let's say he's got like a grade of 60 and now he's at like he's rocking it at 100 and then he gets a grade of 60 and then he gets a grade of 100 and then he gets a grade of 60, right? See, when we when when students take quizzes and tests in math class, sometimes it's like hit or miss for a lot of them. And so Charlie's average at the end of the quarter is an 80 percent. Right. Well, guess what? Ben's average is also 80 percent. And believe it or not, Abigail has also earned the final quarter grade of 80%. But let's suppose that this 80% represents their grade in math class. But which one of these three students truly knows the math? I think you would all say Abigail, right? Because it's, she showed improvement over time. How many of you, when you were in school, you took a test or quiz in math class and you bombed it? 
right? And then maybe a week later, it just clicked. And you want to go back and take that quiz or test, and the teacher's like, nope, uh-uh, no can do. That grade is static. It's part of your permanent record, right? Well, in this new way of grading, right, your child's teacher is not going to punish your child for not being able to demonstrate knowledge of the objectives or mastery of the objectives two weeks ago. If they show improvement, we want to reward their improvement and not punish them for the stuff that they forget at any given time here. Okay. Abigail is one that truly knows the knows how to pack a parachute here because of this right here. I don't want to go with Ben. No way. And I definitely don't want to go with Charlie. Just like Abigail here, right? See how Abigail struggled in the beginning, but now she's soaring with flying colors. You all say she would trust her with that pick with packing your parachute, right? Why? Because she's the one who truly knows the math here or truly knows how to pack a parachute here. Her grade should be a lot higher than 80%. Should it not? So right here, your, your, your child's teacher is no longer grading events, you know, moments in time where they may forget or remember. Instead, they're grading outcomes in class. It might be from a test or quiz, or it might be on classwork or from a conversation that the teacher had with your child or whatever the case may be. The settings could vary. The point is for that PDF that you received, all right, you see a lot of collection of symbols here and it looks very confusing. But the one thing you want to remember is to look for the highest category. The highest category, again, the categories are basic, intermediate, and advanced. And what you want to do is look for the highest category for which your child has earned two consecutive checks in a row. The highest category for which your child earns two consecutive checks in a row determines the score that your student, that your child earns on that objective right there. And that running grade will always change the more that the, the more the more outcomes a teacher records here. Uh, in this Google Sheet, which you received a copy of as a PDF. All right. And your teacher will continue to update this Google Sheet and they'll able to update that PDF that you received. It'll always be updated on, uh, on a frequency that uh, your teacher uh, will determine. So but just want to let you know, this is why your teacher is grading this way. And this is how to interpret this PDF rubric that you've now received. If you have any questions about it, don't hesitate to reach out to your child's teacher and they'll be more than happy to explain what they're doing and why they're doing it the way they are.